Hello, my name is Paul Stryer, CEO and founder of SpeakGeekToMe.com. Welcome to this short video on Basic Interdomain Federation. In this lab, you will get an over-the-shoulder look at how to configure Basic Interdomain Federation. This lab topology is broken up into two sites, each having its own domain, SiteA.com and SiteB.com. Also, each site has its own UC network and its own users and workstations with Jabber. In this lab, Interdomain Federation will be configured to allow users in both sites to see each other's presence indicators and instant message between sites. This lab topology represents how our lab is built for this video. Please stop the video and restart it when you are done observing the lab topology. Let's begin the lab. As you can see, I have a remote session open to an internal Windows workstation that is logged into the domain using a user from the global catalog. The workstation has a SIPC legacy soft phone that is registered to the lab's UCM servers and is stimulating the user's hard desk phone for a virtual lab. This workstation also has a Cisco Jabber client for Windows installed and registered to the CUCM. Just to prove things are working, I will go off hook on the desktop phone and see that your Jabber client status changed to on a call. I will click end call on the soft phone. This user Alex exists in site B. We are going to search for Alice that is in site A. Alex will find Alice because she is in her local Outlook directory. If I double click Alice, it will open a conversation window. If I type something and click enter, as if I'm sending an instant message, the message will not be sent because Federation has not been set up. Also look that Alice has no light at all on her indicator. If we switch to Alice's desktop, notice that no instant message conversation has popped up. Switching back to Alice, the site B user, I will click the phone icon and make a call to Alice. Switching back to Alice's desktop, she will accept the call from Alex. This call works because the communications managers have dial plans as well as a route to get between the sites. I'll return to Alex at Site B's desktop and I will click the red disconnect button to disconnect the call. To save time in the lab, Site B has already been configured for Federation. We will configure Site A for Federation now. I will switch to the remote session for this Site A Active Directory server, which is also the DNS server. Go to Start, Administrative Tools, and DNS. Click the plus sign next to the forward zone and select siteA.com, right click site A, and select other new records. Click create record. In the service field, type underscore XMPP dash server in the protocol, type underscore TCP. In the port, type 5269. And in the host, enter in the fully qualified domain name of your present server or the IP address. This is the address of the local server, not the one on the other side where you'll be calling to. Click OK to create the SRV record. Click Done. I will minimize the DNS manager and open a command prompt to use NSLOOKUP to test the SRV record. Switching to a workstation and opening a command prompt, I will type NSLOOKUP. Next I will type set type equals SRV and press enter. Next I will type underscore XMPP dash server dot underscore tcp dot site a dot com. I can see the information for the DNS server and the IMP server so everything is working. I will close the command prompt and return to the DNS server. Next I will create what's called a conditional forwarder to act as similar to a static route to gain access to the DNS server of site B from site A. Just to prove that there is no DNS connectivity between the sites, I will open a command prompt and I will ping by the fully qualified domain name the IMP server of site B from site A. Notice that my ping has failed. I will now close the command prompt 
and create my conditional forwarder to site B. I will right click the conditional forwarders on the left and click new. I will enter in siteb.com into my DNS domain. And I will click and highlight the IP address field and enter in the IP address of Site B's DNS server. Click the button that says Store this conditional forwarder in the Active Directory. Click OK to save the conditional forwarder. Now I'll open a command prompt and try the ping again. Notice it has failed. This is because we need to flush the DNS on this computer. Type ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS and press enter. Now try the ping again and watch that it will be successful. The local DNS server saw that it was going to Site B and forwarded it to Site B's IP address. Site B did the DNS lookup and completed the ping. I will close the command prompt, open a browser, and navigate to the present server in Site A. Navigate to Presence, Interdomain Federation, XMPP Federation, and Settings. Set the XMPP Federation node status to on. Security mode equals no TLS. Click OK to verify. And set the dialback secret and confirm the dialback secret. Just put a password in and match it, one that's right for your environment, and click save. I'm going to stop the video, restart the XMPP services, and restart the video when I'm finished. I'm going to switch to Alex desktop in site B and type in Alice into her search. I'm going to highlight Alice and hit the plus sign and add her to my contact list. I will create a group for site A. I will scroll down to Alice and double click on her to open a conversation. Notice that Alice is still not lit up. Also notice that the message could not be sent. Switching to Alice's workstation, notice that she has a status request from Alex Ace. Click add to my contacts, create a new folder, in this case I'll create one to site B. and then click Allow. If you scroll down to Alex, you will notice that now Alex has a green light indicating that she's available. This also indicates that presence information is making it between the two sites. I'll switch back to Alex's desktop in Site B and notice now Alice now has a green light. I will type in some information for Alice and hit Enter. I will switch back to Alice in Site A Notice that she now has a conversation window and she has got the message. Without an active phone call, we can also share desktops. I will press the share button on Alex's conversation. Notice the red outline to the desktop. This is a clear indicator that the desktop is shared. I will switch over to Alex's desktop in site B. Notice that there's an invitation. Accept the invitation and the window to share will come up. An ability to share a desktop without an active phone call is a feature of 10.5. Thank you for watching this short video, and as always, thank you for your continued support of SpeakGeekToMe.com.